Welcome to All Classic Car and here we have original photos of pre-war British cars. And to begin with, a great scene here is a Sunbeam Talbot drophead coupe there, parked alongside an Austin 16. These were built either side of World War II and there's another Austin slightly earlier alongside that. You can see a Vauxhall 10 just in the background in the middle there. Also on the left, Ford Model C or CX, Austin and I think Morris 10M. First of a trio of photographs now of a lovely old Austin 7. This is about 1930, this car. A young lady perched on a bonnet. Uh, curtains in the rear windows, in fact. I wonder why that was. The head-on view of the same young lady on the car. You can see the registration now, HX8773. That was a London series that ran from 1930 through to 1933. I do love that photo, I think it's just fantastic. Carrying on with these pre-war photos, another side view of the same Austin 7, the young lady and her man there. Dapper, dapperly dressed there indeed, very smart. I say all these cars are pre-war British cars, 1910s, 1920s and 1930s. There are one or two from the 1940s, but the cars that were of pre-war design and built either side. Now, GPJ223, that's a Ford 8, a Ford 7Y to be precise. These were built from 1937 through to 1939. That's a deluxe because it's got a chrome windscreen surround and it opens. The base model didn't have an opening screen. Slightly early now, a vintage Armstrong Siddeley. Uh, the wheels are very distinctive on the Armstrong Siddleys of this era, as is the shape of the radiator, which you can just about see there on the left. Lovely car, probably a 30 horsepower car. Quite a fine residence in the background as well. Somewhat less smart and glamorous is this very sad, very sorry looking Vauxhall 10. Uh, it appears to have been dumped on some wasteland somewhere. There's a young lad playing behind the wheel. I remember doing a similar thing with an old BMC FG lorry that was abandoned behind a building not far from where I grew up. I'm sure many people watching this will have similar memories. Somewhat smarter now, a side-on view of a Lagonda M45. These were built from 1933 through to 1935. I think 407 were built in all. And around 127 are known to survive with the Owners Club. That's quite a high percentage of survivors. Now, a head-on view of OG6345. This is a standard 9, a Birmingham registered car, circa 1930 or 1931. The lady there seems to be dressed for winter motoring. AA badge on the front as well. A great old scene. I'm not quite sure where this is. A lovely little village, but the car is a bell-sized Tourer, circa 1912-1914 or thereabouts. That was a Manchester firm. Um, great scene, the car's outside a small hotel and you can just see a shop in the background there, a butcher's shop sign on the outside. First of several photos now of a pre-war or early post-war Morris 10M, registered ENR443, that's a Leicester series. Um, these were built from 1938 through to 1948, appears to be having a picnic there. There's a side on view of the same car, like I say, these were built late 40s, um, late 30s and into the late 1940s once the war was out of the way. I think this is a 1948 car, um, very few differences between pre-war and post-war examples, the grille was slightly different but otherwise the cars were very similar. There's a rear view of the same car, looks like another picnic stop, there's a registration you can see a bit more clearly, ENR443. It's got one of those optional exhaust accessory tips on the end. This is the last of the photos featuring this particular Morris. Actually, it's a 1948 car that appears to be at a campsite. A few old caravans dotted around in the background there. late 1920s car now this is a Morris and um, this is a flat nose Morris Cowley there was the Cowley and the Oxford the Cowley was the cheaper of the two cars the Cowleys had three stud wheel fixings and the Oxfords had five stud you can three that see the three studs there so uh, definitely a Cowley to Vauxhall now and this is a Vauxhall it's either a 12 horse ASY or a 14 horse ASX these were built about 1932 to 34 
first car was one of those. My first pre-war car was a Vauxhall 12, just like that. I swapped my Saab van for it. Another pre-war gem here. This is a side-on view of a Wolseley Hornet Special. Uh, many of these were built with various bodies. This is a Freddie March body, um, as in Lord March of Goodwood. Photos now of ATS ladies in World War II, Auxiliary Territorial Services. Um, that's a Humber in the background, or a pair of Humbers indeed, late 1930s. Here's that roof rack on that one there. Clearly she's been doing a bit of work, a bit of cleaning up on that car on the right. You can see, um, looks like it's been polished, waiting to be buffed up. And there she is again, complete with cigarette. Uh, appears to be working on another pair of Humbers. That one's got the tyre pressure written on the, or painted on rather, on the rim of guard. A third of these ATS related photos, there's a couple of Humbers there. Slightly out of focus, but I thought it was quite interesting with that shuttle car sign on the front of it. If you know any more details about these cars or, was it 20 company there, uh, please let me know in the comments. Back to Austin's, back to Longbridge's finest. These were introduced in 1922. Um, that's an early scuttle lamp car. You can see the painted radiator surround as well. Here's a real odd ball. This is a 1920 Eric Campbell light car. These were built from 1919 through to 1924 in Cricklewood in London. A few hundred of these were made, very few if any survive. If you've got one of these, please let me know, I'll be interested to hear. The size of the steering wheel relative to the rest. Back to Fords again. This is actually a post-war image, because you can see that E493 a Prefect in the middle there at the background. And the car on the left, EWA381, that's another example of the Ford 87Y. That's a Sheffield registration from late 1937. Now, maybe you can help me out on this one. What car is this? We've got five stud wheel fixings. It's a two-seat Tourer with a dicky seat in the back. But what car is it? I did think possibly Austin 12, but I think they have six wheel studs. High up view now of a fantastic old Vauxhall. This is a Vauxhall 1440 LM. Now, these were built now from, well, the 1440 was built from 1922 to 27. Uh, front brakes were introduced in 1926 and that car has front brakes you can just see the drums there so it's a 26 or a 27 Vauxhall 1440 LM now this chap apparently according to notes on the back of the photo was Blondie Glover um, but what is the car this was photographed just after World War II obviously an old tin garage there on the left petrol pump there's an MT stenciled number on the petrol pump which makes me think military transport now back to 1920s, and this is a, a sort of photo studio photo taken, uh, I'm not quite sure where this was, we've got various cars in evidence, there's a little van there as well. Basically photographers would walk around photographing people and give them their business card and say if you want the print of this photo, come and see us. And that's what this photograph is here. Now a slightly chaotic scene, we've got a Sunbeam Talbot drophead, a Tora, and a standard saloon in the background, it's evidently a a camping scene, there's a little caravan there as well, something for everyone, but looks slightly chaotic and the sunbeam itself looks a bit tired. Lovely old vintage scene here, there's a chap with a fine hat, um, and the car is a Triumph Super 7 Saloon. Carrying on with these original photos of pre-war British cars, We've got a fantastic old Riley here, Coventry registered Riley. This is a Riley 9 Monaco of about 1930 or 31. It's a lovely vintage Rover here. You can't quite make out the registration number, but there's a sign in the window for the Southport Flower Show. So I'm guessing this is up Southport Way, possibly on the beach up there. Uh, what a fine car that is, quite a rare car that is, a Sportsman's Coupe of about 1929. See the fold back roof. Side on view of another Austin 7, this one an open top model, outside a pub. 
it would appear fantastic. Lovely 1920s car here. This is a Vauxhall, I think a 2060 Princeton Tourer. A note on the back says lunch near Mayfield, November 1930. Many of these photos seem to involve eating and picnics. You probably spot the theme. There's another view of the same car there on the right. Head on view this time. You can see the registration PR 9852. That's a Dorset series that ran from 1923 to 1927. That's picnicking in his style, complete with uh, tablecloth there, all sorts of things going on. Teapots, kettle, fine china. And here we are again, the same family, uh, just winding up the old gramophone record player there. Up, up and away here, we've got a four-door version of the Ford Model Y. This would be about 1933, 34, something like that. This particular car, they did the two-door and the four-door. And here it appears to be winched onto a small ship, ferry, something of that ilk. You can just see another car at the bottom left there as well. Now, keeping his car clean, this gent is washing a circa 1921 or 1922 Vulcan Tourer. Four seats, four door tour, very rare car indeed. I love the bonnet mascot on this particular car. Solid disc wheels, uh, very, very similar to many other cars of the era. Quite hard to identify sometimes. And there's a gent here peering under the bonnet of his Vauxhall. Um, this is a Vauxhall 14. You can just about make out the grills on the side of the bonnet there, which are quite distinctive with the Vauxhalls. Also, the headlamps are mounted on the side of the radiator surround. It's another giveaway that this is a Vauxhall. Slightly older now, back to the 1920s, we've got a four-door Singer 10 Tour. Very smart car indeed. These uh, vintage Vauxhalls are a popular choice with a well-heeled motorist in the 1920s. Um, this is actually slightly earlier, in fact this is a D-type Vauxhall, about 1914 or 15, the 25 horsepower car. A great car, as you can see the Oster screens to protect the rear seat passengers, those clipping uh, windscreens if you like. A bit later here we've got a Morris 8 Series 2 Saloon, you can tell it's a Series 2 because it's got the painted radiator surround and if you could see the side of the car it would have the painted solid disc wheels if you like rather than wire wheels. Nice old standard here, CHO232, that's a standard Flying 12, um, 1937 or 1938 is the build date for this one. The registration is a Hampshire series introduced in July of 1937. Down to the beach again, and this appears to be a Hillman, probably about 1932 or thereabouts, a Hillman Minx Saloon. It's either snowing or there's a lot of dust inside the camera, um, but this is a Morgan three-wheeler and I think this is a Morgan Grand Prix, but if you know your vintage Morgans please let me know in the comments and just sort of confirm or deny that identification because I'm not 100% on that one, but I'm sure someone will know. Back to vintage Vauxhalls again, we've got another D-type here and according to a note on the back this was taken at Whitson in 1928. Another picnic scene, large gathered family there. And there's the same car again, parked in a different location. Another photo of the same Vauxhall, this time in a slightly more suburban setting. Uh, where this is though, I don't know, but Vauxhalls at the time were definitely for the more well-heeled motorists in society back at the time. It's 
somewhat smaller is this side on view of a Wolseley. I think this is a Wolseley 1122 of the early 1920s and apparently according to note on this photo this one was nicknamed Fenella. You see the rear dicky seat as well there. Next up a big old standard UF6913. That's a Brighton series that ran from 1925 through to 1933. I think this is a circa 1929-16 horse Envoy Saloon, a standard Envoy. But again, if you can uh, confirm that or give me any more info on this car or any of the cars feature, please let me know. Lovely old scene here now of an Austin 7 Chummy, roof down, scuttle lamps. Great old scene that is. I wonder if the house looks the same now. Two photos now of an early 1920s um, Rover 8. This was an air-cooled car. This one's an Oxfordshire registration, and it was called a Geraldine, apparently. BW6190. So it was an air-cooled car. There's a side-on view of the same car. Three stud wheel fixing, solid disc wheels. You can see the air intakes on the side of the bonnet panel there to keep the air-cooled engine cool. Continuing with these pre-war British cars, we've got a lovely old Austin 6 saloon here, complete with family, looking very pleased with their motor car. Car dates to about 1930, I would have thought. Up, up and away, first of two photos now of EMU 153. This is a Morris 10-4, pre-series Morris 10-4. Uh, it was actually photographed in Sweden in 1938. The car itself is a London registered car from 1936. Now it is on the key side, either being readied for loading or being unloaded. The big GB sign on the back there. Like I said, this was in Sweden in 38. Let me know in the comments what you think of these, these old pre-war British cars. I love these old photographs, I really do. The fashions, the road signs and all sorts. Here, YV2704 is a 1928 Sunbeam 20 Wayman Saloon. Some of these cars have featured already on the old classic car website and the image gallery that's on there. There's a huge archive of old car photographs on there, including this one. This is a side-on view of a 1920 Cubit. Um, this photo was taken in June of 1921. Now, these were built in Aylesbury in Buckinghamshire uh, between 1920 and 1925. Quite a lofty driving machine. Similar angle now, very different car. This is an SS1 Tourer from 1934. A very swish two-seater. There's a rear view of the same car, AOY 68. That was a London series introduced in December 1934. You can see the SS badge in the middle of the rear bumper blade there. Very swish indeed. Carrying on with these pre-war cars, we've got a slightly more humble uh, Vauxhall. This is a Vauxhall 10 AVL 520. That's a Lincoln series introduced in August of 1938, so that's a sort of late 38 or early 1939 Vauxhall. Now another standard, this is a much earlier car, this is a standard tour about 1922 or thereabouts, I think it's an SL04. Again it's got those Oster type screens they call them for the rear seat passengers, to, just to prevent a little of the buffeting as you drive along. There's a chap on the right there with his old bicycle. Now to the early 1930s, we've got an Austin. This is an Austin 10-4 saloon, a wide-body 10-4 saloon. These were built from 1932 to 1934 um, with the chrome radiators. After that, they became the Austin 10 Litchfield with a painted radiator surround. There's a sporty little number here, BV3031. This is a Singer 9 Coupe. Uh, my granddad had one of those back in the 50s. Um, that's a Blackburn registered car. Um, Ran all the way from 1930 through to 39. 
This is about 1933 or 34, I would have thought, this particular car. Staying with Singer from an OW8034. That is a Singer Saloon. I think that's an 11 horsepower car. About 1934 or 35. Southampton registered. Quite a rare car now. I don't think I've ever seen one at a show or anywhere like that. But let me know if you've got one. Another roadside picnicking scene. Somewhat more modest than some of the ones we've seen. That's a Morris 8 Series E in the background. One of several cars in this series that were produced either side of World War II. A close-up view of a family crammed into the uh, their family's Austin 7 Chummy. Again, it's an early one with the headlights on the scuttle. You can just about see that there. Various tall buildings in the background. Are they seaside hotels, I wonder? Got that sort of vibe to it. Carry on with these lovely old photos. WD8519. Are they really you? There's a policeman sat inside a Hillman 2070. The car dates to about 1935, I believe. Very handsome machine indeed. A head on view now of another example of the Morris 10 4. This is a pre series Morris 10 4 JD 4574. A lady peering out of the sunroof there. The location isn't known, but the building in the background has Savoy written on it, a sign for Savoy. Here's another odd ball. We've already had the Eric Campbell, and this is the Albert, the Albert 12 horsepower Tourer. And this is a London car from about 1923. I think this one was registered. I love the old BP fuel can on the running board. Such an unusual car, that is. There's another photo of the same car confirming the registration, XN 1495. Note the dog peering over the windscreen now, and the clip in side screens. You didn't have any wind up windows in those days in the doors. Just had clip in side screens. What a rarity that is. Back to Morris 10.4s. This is a slightly later car, the 10.4 Series 2. This one appears to have been driven into a canal or a shallow river. I'm not quite sure where this was, or a pond even. Uh, but I'm sure it wasn't intentional to park it in there. You can just about see the edge, DEH. So that's a Staffordshire registration series. And here's the same car on dry land, the side-on view of the Morris 10 for um, the RAF chap there on the right-hand side and another lady inside with military gear. Picnic time again, as so many of these photos are. I think roadside picnics were very much a thing back in the 1930s. Here's a handsome machine now, CFY647, that's a 1934 BSA Scout. These are quite advanced cars for the day, front-wheel drive. According to a note on the back, this and the next two photos were Uncle Wilf's car. Apparently, someone's written on the back. Quite a rare sight. And there is Uncle Wilf, apparently. Uh, not my Uncle Wilf, just whoever owned these photographs originally. HN 9676. It was a 1934 SS1 Coupe. And here's another photo of one of his cars, and it's another example, but a different one, of a BSA Scout. Very rakish machine indeed. Still a few of these pre-war British car photos to come, don't worry. Not done yet, uh, but if, you, if you've got any photos like this and you'd be happy to see them included in a video like this, uh, please let me know. This is a side-on view of a Wolseley 1456 Series 2. This era of walls, it was very much based on Morris body shells at the time. You've got a Hillman Minx in the background there. Well, a racy looking model here. This is 1926 Sunbeam. Just under three laces, the engine size. Not quite sure where this was. Perhaps it was a VSCC event. Looking at that uh, entry number on the front there, clipped on. SG9500, that's a 1924 to 1926 Sunbeam. There are quite a few photos of this car on the old Classic Car website in the image archive section, so if you like your old photographs similar to the ones that I'm showing here, please, please go and have a look at the old Classic Car site and find your way to the image archive. Next up, a side-on view of a Vauxhall Light 6, probably a 14 horsepower car, circa 1935.
see a little box brownie just on the running board there as well. But clearly they had another camera to hand. Next up, DUR578. That's another example of the 37 to 39 Ford 7Y. Um, this would become the Anglia a little later. Another Morris now, and another Morris 8 Series 2. Again, the painted radiator surround is the giveaway on that one. Back to Morris, and we have another Morris Cowley, four-seat, four-door Tora. Close in view of another car now, this is a vintage machine and it is a Clino, um, sometime from the 1920s, it appears to be a two-seat Tourer, uh, but more than that I can't really tell, interesting mascot there, and the radiator. There's a really early photo and another obscure car, it's a circa 1925 Stonely light car clearly being used to collect funds for something on the little van on the left I think is a Ford Model T back to Morris 8 again and another Series 2 Morris 8 this one's having its uh, wheel changed at the side of the road you can just see another lovely old road sign just in the distance on the left behind the car the orange, uh, red triangle on the top of it and the black and white pole There's a huge picnic scene on the beach somewhere, and the two cars in evidence on the left is an Austin 8 Tourer, about 1939, and next to that is a Vauxhall, probably a Vauxhall 12 or a 14. Looks like they're all having a lot of fun. This is another car that features on the main old classic car site in the image archive, AYW133, is a Daimler 15 Rye Cabriolet of 1934. This car is still around and I do have some later information about this exact car on the main old classic car site. So uh, if you're interested in that kind of thing, the history of these old cars, please wander over there when you're finished here. Now HLC 641, this is a Birmingham series introduced in 47 and it's a Rover P2 I believe. These were built in varying engine sizes, you had Rover 10s, 12s, 14s, 16s, the big 20. I tried to buy a Speed 20 a little while ago but was pipped to the post unfortunately. Two photos now round out this collection of uh, original photos of pre-war British cars. And this is a Triumph Super 7 of 1927. There appears to be a hangar in the background, a military camouflaged hangar in the background there. Another view of the same car this time with the hood in the raised position and the young lad sat at the wheel. And that photo from August of 1931, but of a slightly earlier car, rounds out this collection of 90 photos of pre-war British cars. Please let me know in the comments if you like these pre-war car photos like this and I'll produce more videos if you do. Thanks very much for watching. Please take a look around the rest of the channel. There'll be more videos along really, really soon. So bye for now.